In this video, I'm gonna explain why I think semi-hollow basses are super cool, something you should know about, something you should consider having a part of your tone arsenal. Let's talk about the three main types of basses. So the first one is a solid body bass. An example of that would be something like a P bass. So a solid body bass is one of the best sounds in the world. I love it. It has a lot of punch, it has a lot of clarity. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great sound. You know, the second type is a hollow body bass. Think something like an acoustic guitar. There's nothing solid in the middle. It's an open resonating chamber. They're really warm. They're, they don't have as much clarity. They have a different tone to them, a cool tone, I will say, but it doesn't have the same punch or the same clarity that a solid body bass would have. But there's a third type, which is a semi-hollow bass. What's a semi-hollow bass? Well, here's an example. If we performed an X-ray on this bass, we would see a solid piece of wood down the middle here and acoustic chambers on either side. The pickups and the bridge are mounted to a solid piece of wood, and then there's resonating chambers as well. So what we have is we have the clarity and the punch of a solid body sort of instrument, but we have some of the warmth and character of a hollow body instrument. It's a really cool sound. Semi-hollow bass has a little bit of that upright vibe. It has this warm, tubby, earthy sort of texture to it. I don't know, it's just like getting a big hug from someone. It's just this big, warm sound. Playing a semi-hollow bass kind of feels like getting a hug from a Wookiee. Not always appropriate, but sometimes it is exactly the right thing. A lot of people associate the semi-hollow bass with traditional blues or jazz music, which it is excellent at, but I find that it can sound good on all kinds of music. If I go to the recording studio to record an album, I always bring the semi-hollow along, and while the Fenders might make it on most of the tracks on the record, there's usually two or three that end up with the semi-hollow, and it's not always the ones that you expect, so trust your ears, but it's such a big and warm and interesting sound that I find Artists and producers tend to really like it and it can end up kind of saving the day it, just because it's such a unique sound and something that I think it's really cool to bring to the table as a bass player. It's just a different tone that you can't get out of a solid body bass. So this is, this is a weird bass. This is a bass that, well, let me back up. So I, a few years ago, I really wanted a Guild Starfire. Guild Starfire is an awesome semi-hollow bass. I wanted that red 60s vintage Guild Starfire and I, I just couldn't afford it. Something that I wanted and I just couldn't get. But I, I felt like I needed a semi-hollow bass. So what is this? This is a $200 bass. It used to be a, a Allen Woody Rumble Cat, I think. It's like a signature series, relatively inexpensive semi-hollow. It had two little mini humbuckers here. And uh, I stripped it down to bare wood with the help of my dad and refinished it and rebuilt it. I, I got a, a Curtis Novak Dark Star pickup, um, which is this, this, the pickup that is in the, in the Starfires. It's a clone of the old Dark Star pickup. Um, Curtis Novak, if you don't know Curtis Novak, uh, makes pickups and it's amazing work that he does. So this is a $200 bass that I got used and probably $300 worth of parts. I really like this bass. It's not perfect, but it definitely has a vibe. And I hope that uh, this is an encouragement to you. Uh, I recognize that we don't all have resources. We don't have money to buy the instruments that we want. Maybe if you can't afford what you want, there might be a way to try and make something similar that actually might sound really cool. Uh, anyway, that's what this bass is. It is a Franken bass that used to be an Epiphone and now it is a poor man's Guild Starfire and I love the way it sounds. So 
so there's the well we already talked about the guild starfire which is awesome maybe one day i'll get one but then there's also the gibson eb2 there's the hofner the violin bass or the beetle bass and actually that is not a semi-hollow bass that's a true hollow body bass why is that because the the inside it doesn't have that solid resonating tone block that makes it a semi-hollow it doesn't have the f holes on the sides which makes some people be confused and think that it's a semi-hollow bass but it's actually a true hollow body instrument but i wanted to mention it because it's in the same sort of family of tone and it is a really great sound so the the beetle bass or the hofner violin bass is a super cool one to know about there's also the fender starcaster which is rad and the fender coronado as well uh, there's a bunch of other ones too these are just some of the main ones i wanted to mention but what are some other semi hollow bases that you think are cool put them in the comment section and i'm sure someone else will think they're cool too i would love to learn so so throw them in the comment section speaking of paul mccartney I recently watched the Get Back documentary, which is awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, you should totally check it out. But in that documentary, Paul is playing his, uh, his Hofner a lot of the time, and he's playing it with tape-wound strings. And I've never tried tape-wound strings on this bass. I've always had flats on it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try tape-wound strings. I'm gonna AB it with flats and tapes, and maybe you can help me decide which one you think sounds cooler on this bass. So that's gonna be at the end of the video and let me know in the comments what you think is the coolest option. Okay, so the semi-hollow bass. It's a bass that has a solid tone block and hollow acoustic chambers, so it gives us the clarity and punch with that tone block, but it gives us some of that warmth and mellowness and acoustic texture that we love from the resonating chamber. It's a really cool sound. It's a sound that might come in handy for you, even in some context where you don't expect it to. It's a sound that I think that you need to know about. If you wanna support the channel, I have a bass course that's available. The link is in the bio, check it out. And to end the video, I'm gonna demo these two types of strings with this bass. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you on the next video.